Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. One that is long overdue. I am super late on this one. Uh, this is the Sharp by Design Production Apex. I've actually got two of them here. I've got a standard version, and I've got a super dressed up special edition, mainly to showcase the other blade shape. These are available, not this one. This was a special edition you had to get directly through Brian Nadeau, but the Apex itself is still available. You can get it uh, in uh, red and black. You can get it in blue and regular titanium. You can get it in the Tanto, the Drop Point. You can even still get them in Damasteel. I will make sure that they are linked right down below so you guys can check them out if you want to. It does help my channel when you use my links, but that is entirely up to you. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. And thanks so much to Sierra underscore bound for loaning me this special boy uh, and Joe for loaning me uh, this one. These will go back to them when I'm done. I do not get to keep these. I'm going to tell you guys right now, this is uh, a pretty underrated knife. I know that some people have them and the people that do have them are very happy with them. Um, but... Uh, I, I just feel like these these are overlooked. Um, something that uh, I don't I don't know that a lot of people were aware of initially. These are not M390. These are S90V. Um, I am a huge fan of Sharp by Design or Brian Nadeau designs, right? Uh, and if you didn't know, uh, Brian Nadeau does make custom knives here in the United States. So those are the ultra expensive ones, like the uh, Arch Nemesis, right? That is a Brian Nadeau custom. Those are made in the United States, small batch, extremely expensive. Um, but so that people can get their hands, many like like what a lot of makers do, so that people can actually get their hands on some of these designs is they uh, partner up with an OEM that can produce them in higher numbers. In this case, Riot is doing these, and they have they can make more, and they are less expensive, right? That's that's what's going on here. These are Riot produced production collaborations. Um, there is quite a range in price. I'm going to talk all about that and explain to you guys which version I think is the best because, spoiler alert, I really like this knife and I think anybody who picks it up will also really like it. Um, overall length of the Apex might shock you. It's actually eight inches. Uh, overall, blade length is coming in at 3.6 inches, which is no surprise. The blade to handle ratio on Sharp by Design knives is always spectacular. Cutting edge is a full three and a half inches. How about some size comparisons? I'm gonna move the special one out of the way so it doesn't get marked up. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here, this is definitely a full-size knife. It's about right in between the Rat 1 and Rat 2. Let's go ahead and put it up against the Demco AD 20.5. There we go. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3. Alrighty, and last but not least, let's put it up against the Dem, uh, the Benchmade Group Tillinger, in this case the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bugout. This is uh, extremely similar in overall size to the Ritter Hogue, but you can see there's less handle and more blade, just a little bit more. I think the Ritter Hogue's like 8.1 inches overall, something like that. How's the action on this knife? Um, so Riat makes amazing knives. They're a you know a fantastic and very capable uh, OEM. Um, I think Sharp by Design knives are a perfect example of how um, when the designer is just as, if not more knowledgeable than the people making the knives, <laughs> sometimes the final product, the translation between the two, right? If you could imagine Goku and Vegeta doing the fusion dance perfectly, right? Th this is what happens. Um, you get something that's truly excellent. And uh, I own um, a couple of uh, uh, Sharp by Design Riot collabs. Uh, the uh, Evo Typhoon and the um, the mini uh, things, things, the Tempest. And both of them are just incredible. Um, and uh, the action on this and the overall execution, fit and finish, it's Riot, but it's like Riot Plus because every last little tiny detail was paid attention to and controlled by Brian Addo, who is a mastermind of a designer and knife maker. Um, so... The only complaint I have about this is that this area on the inside of the lock bar, I wish that they had just scalloped it a little bit more because the tension on the lock bar is, it's not like, oh my God, my thumb's gonna break off, but it's heavy enough, right, that I can feel it. Um, but outside of that, the action, the flipping action, the detent, the, um, like the pivot action is, oh, it's just beautiful, glassy smooth, right? 
Uh, it's just wonderful. And you can also use this gigantic opening hole to reverse flick the blade or forward flick it, but I can't do that because this thumb is still very weak from when I rammed it into the blade of the Reich Lamella. What I'm saying in, uh, here is that the action and the, just the overall, you know, execution of everything is just spectacular. You'll probably notice, you know, uh, this flipper tab is still classic sharp by design, but it is just, a, it's, it's less, there's less of it. It's less of, uh, intense. I've heard it described as a boot heel. <laughs> I've always liked the shape of these flipper tabs, but this one is just a little less prominent, a little less, you know, out there just poking into everything. Not that that really has has bothered me in the past, but um, this just works really well. You know, if you've ever looked at the flipper tabs on on uh, Sharp Design flippers and thought, great, uh, it's just a little bit too much for me, this is just a little bit less, right? It's a little bit more like just it's it's no more than what you need and you still get that really satisfying you know uh transition of energy from your finger to you know the break of the detent and the blade uh deploying out into the locked position it feels really good and it's equally satisfying to reverse flick it this is just an absolute joy to manipulate i really like it honestly i think the action on these is a little better this one has been carried and used a bit by the owner uh, so it's broken in a bit but the action on this guy actually feels better than the models that I own. So, really nice. Um, let's go ahead and do carry profile. So, thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here it's a little bit thicker, but it's important to point out that the scales here are contoured, which is something that is usually preferable. It feels a little bit better in the hand versus thinner, flatter scales. Uh, length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3, just like the other EDC friendly, sharp by design models. This is going to be um, an absolute joy to carry. Um, it doesn't feel tiny, it doesn't feel huge, it just feels like the size of your average pocket knife. It's nowhere near as tall as the hump in the Para 3. Honestly, I think this is less cumbersome overall than the Para 3, despite the Para 3 being a fair amount shorter, right? And obviously nowhere near the same size as the PM2, but <laughs> your cutting edge, <laughs> look at this. The cutting edge, right, on, on the uh, the Apex is um, quite a bit more than on the PM2. And it's just so much less of, a, of an object, right? The PM2 is quite a bit more object, right? And you could argue, well, you got more room, ergonomic room on the PM2 to kind of move around. I don't know that I'd really need a different grip than this, right? Me personally, maybe some other people might. I don't want to get it too hung up on comparing it with the PM2, but it's just really impressive, I think, is what I'm trying to point out there. Let's go ahead and weigh it. What are we looking at for materials? We have titanium, DLC titanium, and then we have uh, a red aluminum inlay. Why aluminum? Well, um, you can't get red on the uh, spectrum, the, the anode spectrum for titanium. So that was a way for them to achieve red. Um, and then they also offered them um, with, uh, you know, like a blue inlay. I got to be honest, I kind of wish that they had a version of it that just didn't have and it, well, truthfully, I wish they had a version that was a solid carbon fiber inlay. The hole is a, um, you know, a, a means of reducing weight. And at the same time, it's a design element, right? You've kind of got a big hole in the blade and you've got a hole here. So some people are going to like it. Some people aren't. I have a feeling that's part of the reason why some people, you know, maybe initially did not pick this up. I'm going to tell you that's not a reason to shy away from this. Uh, and especially if you're like, I like holes, right? Well, then here you go. It's got one in the handle. Um, I kind of would have preferred a solid inlay and I think it would have been cool to have an option that was more plain more you know sort of grayscale right just like a plain titanium with a carbon fiber inlay I think it would have looked really handsome um, with the blade but uh, the way the options that uh, you have for these with either the blue aluminum or the red aluminum I think look really great if there was a version of it that is exactly what I'm describing I am not aware of it so sorry about that the versions that I am aware of are blue and red or the super special edition with the Mokotai inlay. And this was, to my knowledge, only available direct through Brian Nadeau. And it was substantially, as you could guess, substantially more expensive, right? This is probably the version I would have gone for, but my budget does not allow for me to get everything that I want. So I unfortunately missed that one. Um, but yeah, uh, it does, it is kind of cool to see some red on a knife like this, right? Um, just because we don't, we don't usually get to see that color unless it is aluminum. So it's, it's kind of nice, right? Um, so we have aluminum, titanium, and then as I stated, S90V for the steel, we'll go ahead and measure, um, 
the uh, spine real quick. I'm going to guess that these are probably 135 to 145 thousandths. And no, it's even thicker than that, actually. It's 155 thousandths. It's kind of surprising. Um, but there you go. Weight, which there we go, the scale. Uh, the weight on these guys is going to come in at 3.7 ounces. Considering you have 3.6 inches of blade, the ratios are almost perfect. And your balance is, as expected, right behind the pivot, right where you're going to put your index finger. So you get quite a bit of knife. Uh, folds up into a nice compact size, nice EDC-friendly size. Uh, really nice in the pocket and not a lot of weight. It's just, it's one of those things where, you know, <laughs> this is created by somebody who is really particular about every last little tiny element. And it's just, uh, it's just really great. Another thing that's really great is uh, the incredibly minimal hardware. We have, um, you have a, a screw on the inside holding the, uh, to my knowledge, the, uh, the inlay, right? I think it's here, yeah. So we have a screw right there and a screw right there holding the inlay in so that, you know, it, it is screwed in. It's not gonna come out. Um, but you don't have to see the screws on the outside. That's nice. That's a nice touch, right? And then we have this screw holding in the pocket clip and then keeping the two pieces of titanium together, which t come together to a seam. And that creates for probably, my guess is structural integrity without the need for excess hardware. And that's great. It's such a simple thing, but it's such a smart way to build these. Um, on top of that, we have, let me get out my hardware for, or my, my tools for a hardware check. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use in this channel. <laughs> it was sound like the, the end of one of those <laughs> uh, ads where they just read off the fine print really fast. Um, the size of the screws is, yeah, T8. Lock bar insert screw, you don't ever need to mess with that. But if you're wondering, that's also T8. And then the pivot is also T8. I couldn't ask for more. It's perfect. It's more minimal hardware than my minimum requirement, right? Um, so that's awesome. All T8, really easy to take apart and put back together. It's just genius. Just fantastic. Can't No complaints whatsoever. Okay. We measured everything. We did all that meat and potatoes time. Let's take a look at these two blades. By the way, if you're thinking, holy crap, I didn't realize the Damasteel ones look like that. I'm going to go get me a Damasteel one. Stop. Unfortunately... Uh, so this is a deep etch that has then been polished. You can see there, there is no, like, it's not like light and dark. But, I mean, it, the whole thing has been polished. And I talked with Levon about this from the Knife Nuts podcast. I think that was something that Brian Nadeau did himself. I don't know if it was Ria that was doing that uh, um, or if it was uh, Brian Nadeau doing that. Um, these were much more expensive, but this specific Damasteel variant is not the same as the Damasteel ones that you can get that are available right now. Those have a standard etch where you have the light zones and the dark zones. They'll still have a high polished in, in, the, in the light zones, but the dark zones will be what they normally are, right? Some people prefer that. I think this looks way better. Holy moly. This That finish to me helps justify the incredible price hike that we have seen on Damasteel in the last few years. Um, I'm not so much like, yeah, you should run out and get the regular Damasteel variant. It's way more expensive than this, right? If they all looked like this, okay, that's a little bit easier to choke down. Um, but eh. um, So yeah, there, there, is a, there is a difference between this and the Damasteel versions that are still available out there. Mainly, I wanted to point out this grind. This is a really cool compound Tanto grind. We actually have some belly in here, which is nice. Most of the time, Tantos are just a straight edge. So you get to enjoy the Tantoness of this while still having a nice slicing belly. Uh, this guy feels like it's a little bit a little bit thinner behind the edge, which makes sense, hollow grind, right? And then you have the flat tip out here. So if you don't mind sharpening a tanto, right? If you don't mind having to change angles, then the tanto might be the way to go, especially if you're trying to get it as thin behind the edge as possible. Um, if you don't want to mess with that, this would be my, my choice, honestly, would be this guy. And, you know, either way, truthfully, I'm not going to do that with, with Scott's, but this guy, um, yeah, no problem. These will cut and slice, and they have no, you know, I understand it's just paper, right? 
Obviously, the blade's going to act different depending on what you're cutting, but generally speaking, this is going to make short work of most things. Um, to my knowledge, uh, Riot is heat treating S90V appropriately, so probably there's no, I, I haven't confirmed this, but my guess is they're hitting that 62 to 64 range with S90V. Again, I don't know, and I don't have a way to test this, right? I think this is a good uh, S90V is substantially better than I had originally given it credit for years ago when I was like, I don't really like S90V, it's chippy, right? I think I had a bad, um, I think I, think I um, you know, just had a, a crappy example of it. Um, but uh, here recently, um, a lot of the S90V that I have used has been much preferable um, to the <laughs> omnipresent M390, right? S90V seems to hold an edge uh, quite a bit better while at the same time being just as tough, if not tougher, than M390 in my experience, which is weird. Um, but then again, you consider that it's not quite as stainless as M390, and maybe that makes sense with the whole cake mix, right? I'm not a metallurgist, but I like S90V way better than M390, and I'm happy to pay um, you know, that premium price tag on a knife like this when it comes to the S90V. To me, that is a bonus. S90V is absolutely one of the most premium compositions that you can get right now. And it's really nice that they chose to go with S90V over uh, M390 on these because that's, that's normally what we get is M390, right? Damasteel is, of course, also an excellent choice. That's going to be uh, Damasteel's proprietary blend of PMC27 and RWL34. So you have two powder form steels creating a, you know, sort of pattern welded double powder composition, um, which will perform extremely similarly to CPM 154, which is probably one of the most balanced compositions on the planet. And in my opinion, one of the best user steels on the planet. It will not hold an edge as long as S90V, but it'll be substantially easier to sharpen and quite a bit tougher. And, uh, you know, in some cases it looks a lot better, right? So it just depends on what you want. Um, but I, I think honestly, the best way to go is with the S90V. And I'll talk more about that. Um, this has a machine satin finish on the blade, and I think that is your only option. Um, it's fine. It all comes down to preference. Inside of this hole, nicely chamfered down, so you're not going to be shaving your fingernails while you deploy it. Edges up here have also been knocked down. It doesn't get sharp till you get to the swedge down there, but that's not really that big of a deal. As per usual, the blade is absolutely perfect. That's what we expect from Riot. Final cutting bevel is perfect. Swedge looks nice. Tip is great. It's a really utilitarian blade shape, and we have plenty of... I'm jimping out here. Ergonomically, this thing is excellent, except for one thing, which was actually pointed out to me repeatedly by um, people um, when I did the unboxing. I went on and on and on about how perfect the pocket clip was, and everybody was like, that tip of that thing is sharp. And I realized, yeah, you know, it is kind of. This could be uh, knocked down a little bit. Uh, functionally, the clip is great in and out of the pocket. It's a fantastic design, and it is a milled clip, not a stamped clip, but the very tip of it is a little bit sharp. And that does dig into your hand a little bit. I'm not going to call it a full-on, oh my gosh, hot spot, right? Every time I grip this knife, I feel like my hand's just going to fall off from unbearable pain. No, but after a while, continuous cutting, that will dig into your hand if you're not wearing gloves. It would be cool to have that, that little, just right there. That spot right there is just kind of a 90-degree ledge. It would be nice to have that knocked down a bit. Outside of that, though, ergonomics on this thing, extremely comfortable. And you are pretty darn close to the edge. Nice sharpening choil there, right? This is just done really well. And this, this isn't quite as pointy as some of the flipper tabs in the past on uh, some of these Sharp by Design knives. So this doesn't dig into your hand like you might think. And the edges are also knocked down on either side. Um, on all sides of that flipper tab. So that's great. The blade is wonderful. It's a drop point blade with a nice big opening hole in here, nice swedge, right? Really good. Time-tested blade shape. I think S90V is a, a good choice for that geometry um, in my... <laughs> in my opinion, which which lacks extensive testing, right? I'm just a regular guy. Um, I, don't, I don't do anything professional with knives. I just use them like knives, right? Uh, inlay work is perfection. It is their seamless transition from the titanium to the aluminum. You can just barely feel the line, which is fine. Uh, I also like this because it covers uh, a lot of the lock bar, and that means that you really don't have to be too careful about where you put your fingers, right? Your fingers are going to pretty naturally land on that inlay and not put pressure on the lock bar. So that thing is just going to flip readily every single time you flip it. And that's nice. 
There is no lanyard thing. I, oh, no, I don't care. If you love lanyards, sorry. There's no lanyard thing, right? Pocket clip, um, the uh, position of it, the angle of it, and the depth of it are all fantastic. Like I said, my only issue is that that edge should be slightly knocked down. Very strong, a lot of material in that clip. Um, probably not going to have to worry too much about bending it out. Uh, that would be a pretty extreme situation. I also like that, you know, because this is a seam construction, if there are any goof ups where it meets up, yeah, you're really going to be, you're really going to notice. Um, but that is not the case here. In fact, even the centering, the tip of that connects perfectly. Can we actually see? I'm trying to find the seam so I can show you. Uh, the seam is almost invisible. You can see the tip of that is perfectly lined up with the seam of the titanium, which is um, very satisfying, extremely satisfying. Uh, testament to um, Brian Nadeau's attention to detail in the design and Riot's manufacturing quality and also their attention to detail, right? And all these Sharp by Design models have been about the same. We actually have a stop pin in the standard position, super deep shouldering, way in there. It's nice. Lock bar insert doubling as the over travel stop. Great lock up geometry. I think we're locking up at 25% or so. No blade play at all. No hint of blade play up, down, left, or right. Absolutely zero lock stick. No double clutch. No pivot lash whatsoever. Extremely smooth and consistent action. Very nice click into the closed position. Like I said, perfect centering with no detent lash. These come in at $375. And, uh, you know, I always say um, Chinese production knives that are, you know, kind of basic run of the mill, I kind of expect 200 to 2 250 you know, some, somewhere in there. Um, and, you know, for every $25 to $50 more, they better be bringing some extra sauce to the table, uh, definitely. I do not like to see generic, just flat, whatever, bringing basic materials, not doing anything special, or it's just like kind of like this is the the norm. This is we're bringing the bare minimum, right? But we want uh, to charge three hundred or three hundred and fifty five, three hundred fifty or closer to four hundred dollars, right? These guys are definitely more expensive. The base price on these is three hundred and seventy five dollars, but you are getting absolutely flawless fit and finish. You're getting an S90V blade, getting some really cool design elements, and it might not be to the taste of everyone, right? But really nice design elements. You're also getting an incredibly simple and incredibly strong um, uh, construction, right? I mean, maintenance on this thing is going to, it runs on bearings, by the way. I don't know if I needed to say that. Um, but uh, you're, you're getting a knife that is very easy to maintain uh, and absolutely feels as premium as it should for this, you know, this price tag. The damage steel ones coming in at 525 or five, they're just, it's just too much for damage steel. If you really like damage steel, I remember when it was only 150 bucks or so. I mean, well, you know, I mean, considering it, 375 would be 475. It's, it's actually, it's actually not, right? It's just, God, it's a lot. You know, I, um, it's, it's a lot of money. I guess they're, they're being pretty fair. Some companies are like, Oh, you want damage steel? That'll be $300 more. This guy is quite a bit more expensive, but it has a much more premium. I mean, it was more expensive. You can't get it anymore. Much more premium finish on it, and it's got mocha tie inlays. That's going to cost more money, just period, right? You can say, well, those are non-functional elements. Not everybody buying knives in, in this territory is, is wanting dollar for dollar measurable functional elements, right? In fact, I would say that population severely dwindles and is replaced by people who specifically want those extra elements and care nothing, you know, for their additional utilitarian elements, right? Uh, but anyways, <laughs> three seventy-five is a lot of money, right? Everything is costing a little bit more uh, right now. But as far as knives that cost three, I mean, you know, other knives that come to mind that are made by Riot that cost about the same. Chavez Redemption 229 and Liberation are right around the same territory. And I love those knives. But holy crap, they are not bringing the same heat to the table as this thing. Excuse me. This is an underrated knife, right? Not everybody's going to be beating down doors to spend $375 on a pocket knife. But if you are considering spending this much money on a knife, this is one of the nicest things available. Um, this is going to, like, if you're just terrified of spending that much money because you're like, what if something's not perfect? For that much money, I really want it to be perfect, even if some people think that's an unreasonable expectation. Hey, I get it. 
If you want absolute perfection, right? <laughs> if you want the least expensive perfection that exists, you better, you, really, you, you got to go with something that is designed by Brian Nadeau and manufactured by Riyadh, right? This, this is it right now. Um, the Apex is about as perfect as it's going to get. And I mean as far as overall fit and finish. You can think what you want about the designs, their choice to use the aluminum inlay um, or... Uh, because here's the thing. People are going to be like, aluminum, 375 for aluminum. Listen, doing it like this is more expensive than just leaving it full tie, right? So stop. If you feel like that's what you're going to type, let me stop you for a second. If this was just full titanium just and it, they didn't do anything here, right? Would that make you feel like it's more worth it than with the aluminum? It costs them more money to carve out the titanium to, to, to machine a specific piece of aluminum and lay it in perfectly, right? So don't reduce it to just aluminum not as valuable. It's, it's more expensive for them to do it this way, right? And they wanted that color contrast. They wanted to do something that was more interesting than just plain Jane titanium. Even though, admittedly, I probably would have gone for something a little more plain Jane. I still understand, you know, I understand how they're getting to that price tag. It's not a, oh my gosh, my socks are blown off. This is the best value ever. But then again, competition, right? If we're talking the $350 territory, there's not a lot of stuff that I can honestly say I think is a better value in this territory. Uh, I think this knife is underrated. If you have been on the fence about this knife, don't be. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, going with the standard version at 375 is an excellent idea. And I think if you pull the trigger on it, you're going to be extremely happy. Um, I'm getting more and more particular about knives that I offer this type of praise to. Um, and you guys have probably noticed that. You probably noticed on my channel, I've got quite a few more negative reviews than I used to do. And it's just a, um, you know, it's, I think it's a natural, thing that happens when you review as many knives as I do. You get really, really picky. So um, I, uh, I was really happy with this. I expected to be happy with it. And I'm, I'm glad that um, this, uh, this ended up being exactly what I thought it was going to be, which is an excellent knife. This is uh, very recommendable. Um, so I'm going to put it in my most recommended knives playlist. Thanks again. Um, to the gentleman who loaned me these beautiful knives for review. I wish I could say more about this knife. You know, what can I say? It's beautiful. This is the most um, extreme version of this that existed. And holy crap, <laughs> I wish all damage deal was finished like this. This is just gorgeous. Uh, Brian Nadeau remains just just like a step ahead. You know, he just he just is. Um, it's, it's always a, a delight to see, you know, what he's coming out with next. And I'm, I'm looking forward to new models in the future for sure. Like I said, these will be linked down below so you guys can check them out. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.